Hello everyone. So far we have focused on the positive, what can be computed with distributed algorithms. Now we will look at the negative, what cannot be computed with distributed algorithms. We will start with the port numbering model. This is a weak model and there are lots of problems that cannot be solved at all in the port numbering model. And this week we will learn a very powerful technique for proving such results. The key concept is called covering maps. You'll find the precise mathematical definition in the lecture notes, but in this short video I'll try to explain the intuition behind this approach. Let's look at some port number network N, like this one here, and imagine you've got some deterministic distributed algorithm A. It doesn't matter what the algorithm does or what problems it solves, it's enough that it's a well-defined algorithm in our formalism. There's an init function, send function, and receive function. Now, once you fix algorithm A and network N, you've also uniquely defined the execution of the algorithm. You can just simulate the algorithm here and see what messages nodes send in each round and how they update their states. You can find out, for example, what's the state of node A after round 5. Okay, good. Now let's take two identical copies of the network. We duplicated all nodes and all edges. Let's call this new network X. Now we run the same algorithm A in network X. What happens? Well, obviously, we'll get exactly the same thing as in network N. Everything was just doubled. So if in network N, in round 5, node A sent message M to its first port, then in network X in round 5, node A1 sends the same message M to its first port, and so does node A2. And whatever was the state of node A after round 5 in network N, then the states of A1 and A2 are going to be the same. Okay, this was of course trivial. Now comes the interesting part. Let's modify X slightly. Let's, for example, replace these two straight edges with edges that go across. And let's run algorithm A in this new network Y. Now, what happened? Well, if you think about it, before the first round, all nodes in Y have the same states as the corresponding nodes in X. And therefore, all nodes also send the same messages in the first round in X and in Y. And the messages sent by A1 and A2 were identical in X, and so were the messages sent by B1 and B2. So if you just look at what messages the nodes receive in the first round, you won't see any differences between X and Y. For example, it doesn't matter if the message B1 received came from A1 or A2, as both of the nodes were identical, they were in the same state, and they sent the same messages. So everyone received the same messages in X and Y. And hence everyone in Y ended up in the same states as the corresponding nodes of X after the first round. Whatever was the state of A1 in X after one round is equal to the state of A1 in Y after one round. And we can repeat the same reasoning for each round. Before the second round, nodes A1 and A2 in Y weigh the same states as nodes A1 and A2 in X, and both of them were in the same states as node A in N. So they send the same messages, and therefore it doesn't matter whether we are in network X or Y. So during the second round, all nodes in Y receive the same messages as the corresponding nodes in X, and they end up in the same states. To summarize, after each round, nodes A1 and A2 in Y 
are in the same state as nodes A1 and A2 in X, which are in the same state as node A in N. Basically, if we imagine that we run algorithm A simultaneously in parallel in these three networks, we will see exactly the same messages and exactly the same state transitions between corresponding nodes. And if, for example, A1 in Y ever stops and produces some output, then all these other nodes will also stop in the same round and produce the same output. So no matter which algorithm you use, no matter how clever it is, it cannot tell the difference between networks N, X, and Y. It can't tell the difference between nodes A1 and A2 in X, and it can't tell the difference between A1 and A2 in Y. So if your task is to, for example, tell if a connected graph has got four or eight nodes, this is not solvable at all. Or if you need to label nodes in this graph with unique identifiers, you can't do it in the port numbering model at all. Formally, what you saw here is an example of covering maps. In this case, there is a covering map from X to N, and also a covering map from Y to N. And we can show that whenever there is a covering map between two networks, then no matter which algorithm you run, the node and its image will be in the same state after each round. The proof is basically what you already saw in this video. We just argue that the nodes are in the same states before each round. So they send the same messages and therefore they also receive the same messages. And it follows that their new states are also identical. The punchline is that covering maps preserve everything in port numbered networks. They preserve the original local states, they preserve outgoing messages, they preserve incoming messages, and therefore they also preserve new local states for all nodes.